Welcome to The Promise. Thanks for joining us online today. If you'd like to know more about the church or supporting this ministry financially, please go to our website, thepromisesd.com. Now, please enjoy the message. Well, we're going to start a new series. Um, I, I feel in my heart that God is saying this is the time to do this. So the, the, I'm going to be preaching on the glory, the power, and the authority released. And uh, I, I, I'm going to share with you some things, some very personal things. And I know that the time is, is of God right now. It's not only for me, it's for you. As Jesus was a central figure in the Gospels, the Holy Spirit takes center stage in the book of Acts. He is, he is the promised gift given to the disciples of Jesus Christ. And through them, they, the disciples, release the power of God onto the world. The Holy Spirit, and we know this, anoints the church to fulfill her mission. She can't do it without the presence of the Holy Spirit because we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to be witnesses in the earth, and we're anointed by the Holy Spirit to actually work mighty, powerful signs and wonders in the earth. Now, the Holy Spirit is not reserved for a select holy few. The Holy Spirit is given to all whom God has called and all who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a gift for all of us. Now, the church who is anointed by the Spirit is not simply a gathering or a fellowship or just a group of people. The, the church is a movement fueled by the Holy Spirit. A, the, the church is called the way. So it is a, it is a movement. It is the way. And this, this movement is fueled by the presence of the Holy Spirit. It is the passionate believers that run with this anointing to accomplish the plan and purposes of God. That's the reason we're here developing passionate believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the passionate believers in Jesus, as you saw today, will go out on the street and do evangelism. They will come to the prayer meeting and they will pray in the Spirit. They're unashamed. They have a mission and a message. And their mission and message is that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, who died on the cross and took our sin, who went to hell in our place and was raised by the Father and through the glory and power of the Holy Spirit. That's their message. If you believe this message, you are translated out from under the power of Satan and his kingdom, and you're translated and placed at the right hand of God the Father in a position of authority and power. It is, it is, it is, it is a supernatural thing that happens. It is not people just playing church or people who go to church when they feel like going to church. This is a very powerful move. It is God's sons and daughters anointed with His very presence to fulfill His purpose and plans in the earth. I believe that the time is now that a revelation of the dispensation in which we are currently living is to be unfolded to us. This revelation will let us know and help us to discern what God's plan is for us. And then as we've discerned God's plan, we will have the power to follow through on God's purposes and plans for the earth. And we will be part of it as we discern what God wants us to do. And this is why I believe it's time for us to ask the Holy Spirit to pull back the curtain and to reveal to us the book of Ephesians to help us understand who we are in Christ, 
What is our inheritance in Him? What is our position and our purpose and the power that He wants us to operate in? And for us to stop playing church games and to get on with the business of winning the lost, healing the sick, raising the dead, and becoming passionate believers in Jesus. Everybody say out loud with me, the glory, glory. power, Power. and authority authority. of of God has been released. And we know this, it's not something that is going to happen, it is something that has already happened. And what we need to do or or discover is, Holy Spirit, help us to understand what has been released and how do we cooperate with you to function in what has been released. All of us know in our hearts, all of us know in our hearts that God has something greater for us, that we haven't reached it yet, have not reached the pinnacle. Heaven reached the summit of what God wants to do with us in our life. We know, don't we? Don't we? Just checking. Just checking. That's the reason you're at the promised church. That's the reason you're here. Because God is going to work things through you because you belong to this tribe. And because you are intimate with the Spirit. Amen. Not to forget you, brother. It was a great sermon. All right. Now I'm going to read to you uh, two very personal prophecies that were given to me. How many of you believe that there are prophets and prophetesses today in the body of Christ as there are pastors and teachers and apostles? You believe that? And you believe that out of their mouth comes the Word of God? And out of, their, out of their mouth will come understanding of God's purposes and plans for us individually and help us to discern and to walk in what God has planned for us. So with that in mind, I'm going to read you two prophecies. And I've, I, I've kept them back for many years. I'm going to read it because I believe it is the time. It's the time. I had a release when we said goodbye to South Africa. And we said goodbye to all our family and friends And we told them we ain't coming back again. They didn't believe it, but we know it. I believe an an era closed in my life, shut down completely. And something new is opened, a new beginning. I spent nine years as the pastor of the church in Valcom. Many, many people got born again. 7,500 people got born again, filled with the Spirit, baptized in water in nine years. For nine years, I promised I, I, I was the pastor of a Harvest Church here for nine years. For 10 years, I took care of Jackie, and I had no pastoral work. I did minister, but for 10 years, I took care of Jackie. And this year is the ninth year of this ministry's existence. I'm 66 years old. The next nine years are going to take me to 75. It's these next nine years that are going to be greater than all of the previous put together. And I believe God has given me the greatest church I've ever had to pastor. Not in numbers, but in quality. There is something in this body that supersedes anything I've ever pastored before. There is a hunger in this body to seek God and to dig deeper and to go further, to jump higher, to run harder, to give more, to pray more, to worship more than I've ever had in my life. And it is a great honor, a great honor to be your pastor. I want you to know that. God has chosen you, as you'll hear in these prophetic words, He has chosen you. And you'll hear it as I read. Both of these prophets have gone on to be with the Lord. And they died young. And the first one is Kim, Kim Clement. It was given to me in January the 31st, 1995. And here his words are. Henry, the Lord says you abandoned much to be able to take something that did not seem greater. But God says, I have given you a show with your eyes. I have shown you exactly what you're going to do. There is a call that was heard in an hour, God says, of desperation. In an hour, now God says, is being fulfilled. Whereof the time of proving 
is come to an end. Where I will suddenly bring forth a proclamation. And there will be a manifestation of many divine things that were promised to you years ago. And God says that you saw them to a measure, but that measure is now being increased. And that measure is now being multiplied. I'm going to give you your heart's desire, which you wanted all along. You have seen those that have been crippled and those that have been under the bondage of the spirits of infirmity in this hour. And they were healed by their hundreds, literally by their thousands in South Africa. It's always been my desire in my heart to see the sick healed. But God says, I've given you a word that would give a people some hope. Therefore, get ready. For when I come upon you, and when I come upon your people, it shall be far greater than any one of them imagined. And this is not a matter of imagination. It is a matter of a call of God that God gave you years ago. Why did I train you in that little town in South Africa? Was it for the African people? Nay. Nay. It was for this people at this hour. And therefore, the training was not in vain. It was for a season. God said there was a time when there was a great prosperity. But now the Lord says, I'm about to show you for the many years that you have sown seed. That you have given. God says, because there was a sowing of abundance. Now there's going to be a reaping of an abundance like you have never dreamt. Why? Because the Lord says that influence has been given to you in a jurisdiction in an area which I'm going to increase. And I will draw, draw to your house men that refuse to come to the house of the Lord that will come in and will be men of influence. And why? Because when I took Philip and I said to him, I want you to go by the way of Gaza, and I want you to go out there. I want you to walk along the road. And as he went, in obedience to what the Lord said, he came across a man who was a eunuch, a man who was even right next to the queen of Ethiopia. And God says, I gave him a word for that man. And the Lord says that that word caused an influence and then a translation. What am I speaking to you about? I'm trying to tell you that I'm going to put you into contact with men that are influential, that will suddenly be touched within one word. Because of that influence that I'm going to give you. And that will affect tens of thousands of people in one strike. And there will be a divine translation as a result of it. In other words, I'm going to put you in territories that you have not known about. Now, this is just like me and you have not contemplated. And you have not worked out. And you have not surmised. Come on now. God is going to take you to it. There will be a breakthrough. And the resurrection power will be demonstrated. Now I'm going to read you a prophecy from Quibus on the 26th of April, 2008. He too has been, has gone to be with the Lord. This was the prophecy that God used at this time, back in 2008, to speak to my heart about coming back into ministry. Because when he gave me this prophecy, I was not in ministry, I was simply taking care of Jackie. He said, people will start thinking you're insane. Some will even say you're just playing a game. God says, this is a new day. I'm opening a brand new way. Your family and friends will totally be amazed. They will realize you must have in the face of God gazed. Because glory will shine so bright. They will know on the inside of you, you must have connected to a higher light. And you will see the glory come. Now, God, listen to this. It will fall on many, not just on some. And you will speak in power. God says, this is the hour. Listen now. You stood back many days. But God says, now I'm taking you on my ways. Like Moses knew me of old, better will it be for you. The greater works of Christ you will be able to do. You've stood on my word 
and have upheld it for many years. But God says, now I'm raising you up to a greater size, and you will know that this is from me. And all around you, eyes will see, glory will fall. And people in the house will have a Christian ball. They will jump up and down, and they will shout for joy. God says, this is your day. This is your hour. Don't wait, and don't delay. You will open your mouth. And you'll know what to say. The words will flow fluently from your mouth. People will say, can this be the lips of clay? Understand that this is what God has to say. And while I was lying out on the floor, he said this in the mic. I just see the glory shining from him. It happened in history a couple of times that glory shone on people's faces. And he will be one of the first they will have it. And write it down. Come back and testify. And you can see why I haven't shared that publicly. It's very personal. And it's not that I'm trying to promote myself in any way. I'm not trying to be anybody. But God knows me. Knows what I've been through. God knows the future. And I believe I have the release of the Holy Spirit to share it with you. Because it involves you. And you're going to be part of it. Amen. And this is the time and this is the hour that we're going to see it happen. Amen. And that's why I feel prompted by the Holy Spirit to begin talking about the glory of God manifesting in our church. Amen. And what I anticipate happening. So we're going to look at, this is just by way of introduction this week because we had so much going on. I'm not going to dig in too deep. We'll go on um, after the graduation. Uh, we'll continue in this, in this vein because I want to show you a bunch of stuff, and we're going to connect the Old and the New Testament. As you know, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. And we're going to see this and how it impacts our life and where we are on God's calendar concerning the manifestation of His glory as the Bible promises that it will cover the earth. And we all know that, right? right? All right. So we're going to look at the glory manifest in the Old Testament, and then we're going to look at the prophecies concerning this dispensation, and then we're also going to look at what is the glory of God. And I will touch on a few of those today, but then we'll get deeper into it two weeks from now. So first of all, the glory of God in the Old Testament was manifested by and large as a cloud, as a cloud. And uh, in Exodus 14, verse 34, it says, Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting. The tent of meeting was the place where... Moses would go to talk with God, and he would talk with him face to face, but there would be a cloud, and then God would speak to him out of the cloud. It was a supernatural experience. No other prophet in the Old Testament ever had such an experience, but it was called the tent of meeting, and the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of God, or the glory of the Lord, filled the tabernacle. So notice where the cloud was, there was the glory And it filled the tabernacle. It didn't just half fill it. It filled the tabernacle. So this was a tent building. And there was a cloud that came in, settled on it, and also inside. And the glory of God filled the whole place. So you understand that this room that we're in right now could quite easily represent the tent of meeting. Because we've come to meet with the Lord. We've come to worship Him and to pray and seek His face. There's a meeting. Now, I understand we have God in us. So don't get me You know, don't get off track. I understand that. But this could quite easily be a tent of meeting or a place of meeting. When the cloud came in and when the glory uh, showed up, it filled the entire place. All right? So you need to get ready. When it comes, it will fill the whole place. Everybody will be touched. Even to the people on the soundboard won't be able to control the sound. So Moses could not enter the tent. Because the cloud had settled upon it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. So they understood this cloud represented the glory of God and it filled the tabernacle. So please remember this. Saved or unsaved, you will get zapped. You're going down. Okay? You're going down. Just get ready. Because it's going to go wall to wall, roof to ceiling. Everybody is going to get it. And I'm believing for it, I'm expecting it, and I'm moving that direction. And I'm asking you to open your hearts and your minds to believe it and come with me. Don't be left behind because I believe God has chosen you to be here for this hour and this is what we need. 
We need this kind of glory and anointing on the street to do what we've got to do. When you hear the testimonies of the people that went out to testify, and when they encountered the people on the streets, and like they were asked, Trevor said, said the one person he spoke said, oh, you, would you like to go to, to heaven? The person straight out said, I'm going to hell. Straight out, I'm going to hell, out of their mouth. That was it. And so we, we have to have the power and the anointing of God to encounter what we are encountering right now. The, the Hollywood effect that's affecting the movies and entertainment of our world, we can't, we can't deal with that with no power. We can't deal with that just by talking and talking and talking. We're going to have to have something that is supernatural that is going to cause people to collapse right there. Now, I'm, I'm, hearing, I'm hearing about great actors. And Cindy, you might be able to remind me of that, that, that one actor. He, he's in the steel suit. He, he's the Robert Downey Jr., Okay, so he had an evangelist, well-known evangelist, came in on site, was speaking and friendly with him, and he offered to pray for him, and he went down under the power, and he called all of the people in his, on his entourage, and he said, you've got to, have, got to have him pray for him. And, and they prayed, and they all went down, flat on the floor, saved and unsaved, it didn't matter. P power of God hit them and knocked them out right on the set. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. We're going to have the power manifested. It's not just going to be words. In 2 Chronicles 5, 11, the priests, when they withdrew from the holy place, all the priests who were there had consecrated themselves regardless of their division. Notice that the priests had consecrated themselves. I believe that is going to be part of what's going to happen where we are today. I believe that those who are passionate believers are going to consecrate themselves. They're going to say, this is it, I'm all out for Jesus. I forget the world, I'm going for Jesus. A complete consecration. Then the trumpeters and the singers joined in unison. The music was in unison and with one voice to give praise and thanks to the Lord. One voice to give praise and thanks. And that's what we do. We give praise and we give thanks with one voice. Now watch what happens. They were accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments. And they raised their voices and praised the Lord. And they sang, He is good. And his love endures forever. When they did this, when they did this, the temple of the Lord was filled with a cloud. I'm here to let you know. And God help us. God help us to remain humble. But we have the most anointed, tight worship team anywhere that I went in South Africa. It doesn't matter how big the churches were. I actually videoed some of the churches to show Paul, not you. <laughs> honestly, honestly, their tears would not be because of the anointing and the move of the Spirit of God. <laughs> it would be, God, please stop them. You have no idea how much we missed this worship and how hungry we felt and how dry we felt. And could not wait to get back into worshiping God with you. Can you give our, our worship team a good round of applause? It's one of the reasons I believe God has nudged me and led me to continue to press in in that direction. To raise that level so that praise and worship is a critical, critical pillar in our church ministry. The temple of the Lord was filled with a cloud, and the priests could not perform their services because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the temple of God. So I would not be surprised if the whole band goes down during worship. Uh-huh. The priests couldn't minister. They couldn't stand. They couldn't minister. They couldn't do. The natural things came to an end. The spiritual things took over, and God was ministering through His glory in that place. How many desire it? In 2 Chronicles 7, verse 1, Solomon, when he finished praying, fire came down from heaven. He wasn't even a prophet. And it consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. And once again, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priest could not enter the temple of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled it. Once again, you notice it filled it. The glory came in and filled it. It wasn't just, oh, pastor falls down for half an hour. We'll look at him. No, 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 no. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the Spirit of God falling on all. 
And according to the prophetic words that have given me, that's what God promised. And I'm going to stand on His promise, and I'm going to trust God that that's what He wants to do with us in Jesus' name. One touch from God is worth a thousand words and a thousand sermons. Trust me. One touch of the Holy Spirit is worth a thousand sermons. You'll walk out here a different person and all the issues that have been going on in your life, one touch from God. You'll walk out and say, there's a God. He's alive. He lives. Amen. We know we make the Word of God a priority in this church and we teach the Word. We make it a priority. But I'm quite happy to step aside and say, Holy Spirit, whatever you want to do, do. Amen. Because that's my heart. My heart is not to stand here and to teach for half an hour or whatever. My heart is that you get touched by God and that you become passionate believers in Jesus Christ and that you, your life has changed and that you go out and do something different. Amen. You see, so many times when we preach, we preach so that, that, that we feel like, uh, we preach and we pray, God changed my circumstances. God changed my circumstances. I am more convinced than ever that God wants to change you, not your circumstances. One touch, one touch if you'll yield yourself, one touch from God. You won't care about your circumstances. They'll be under your feet, I can tell you right now. All right, so let's talk about the prophecies concerning the dispensation in which we're in. In Numbers 14, 21, and we all know this, but as truly as I live, God says, all the earth, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Now that's interesting. Not just the temple, not just that little meeting place, but the whole earth is going to be filled. And that's concerning this dispensation in which we're living. And I'm going to show you how that is, in fact, happening right now as we move on down the teaching. I'll get to that. I'll show you how it's working. In Habakkuk 2, verse 14, for the earth will be filled. The earth will be filled. Now, watch this. Watch this. With the knowledge. With the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. It's two different things. Two different things. There, there, the, most of the church, most of the church, church body, Jesus body, is completely ignorant concerning the glory of God. They have no knowledge of it whatsoever. In fact, you'll see today, before we finish off, that the modern church today is in fact not only ignorant, but rejecting the glory of God. Unwittingly, Rejecting the glory. Hold tight. In Haggai 2 and 6, this is what the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies says, Once again, in a little while, I'm going to shake the sky and the earth and the sea and the dry land. I will shake all the nations, and the one whom all the nations desire will come. That's Jesus. Then I will fill this house with glory. I'm going to fill this house with glory, says the Lord. Verse 8, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord. And I thought to myself, Lord, why would you throw the silver and gold right into the middle of the glory? Why would you be saying the silver is mine and gold is mine? Two things. Two things. I'm, I'm going to share with you. I haven't had many visions in my life. But this vision I've never forgotten. We were in Valcom. We were in a prayer meeting, in, interceding in a prayer meeting. And I was on my face before God, and I suddenly saw, you remember those those lampstands that looked like they used to melt wax and the wax would go up and, and roll. Remember those? Lava lamps? I saw, I saw that in a vision. In, 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 I saw it in my heart. I saw this. But what I saw happening, watch this. Now, what I saw happening was I saw gold going up like this towards heaven and then turning and coming back down like this. I saw gold coins inside this lamp. And the Lord said it's the prayers of the saints going up and the offerings together. And gave me the scripture, you know, the book of Acts. Your prayers and your gifts have come up before the Lord as a memorial offering. Come up. He remembers you. And then God sends it back down. Prayers to change the world and finances to finance the change. And I believe this is why God has said right in the middle of the glory... There's going to be an outpouring of finance. You saw when I read that prophecy. It's like, what are you talking about in the middle of the prophecy? You're talking about that I've been sowing and giving. And God says, but there's going to be an abundance coming to you supernatural. 
it's, it's right there. I, I believe that when this, when this begins to manifest, that we're going to see what we have been sowing and what we've been giving in our prayers. We're going to see it happen. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cause an amazing thing to happen because God is going to finance the end time revival through you. He's going to pour it back on those who can be trusted, who've been trusted with the finances, who've been sowing and giving, and those who've been praying. And God is going to say to you, you've been faithful with a little. Now, here's a lot to be faithful with. Time is short, and I'm going to pour my glory out upon you. And that's when you're going to see supernatural move of God in the realm of finances and in prayer and miracles. Everything is going to be all wrapped together. And you know what? Get the hold of this. Money will be meaningless to you. Will be meaningless. It'll have no value except that it's an instrument for the gospel. Nothing that you will want to hold on to because your heart is not to hold. That's why you're at the promised church. Your heart is not to hold. Your heart is to be generous. And God has seen it. The prophetic word was clear. God has seen it. And he's going to move on the hearts of those who God has entrusted to me. So he says in verse 9, this new house will be more glorious than the former house. So what they experienced in the Old Testament, God is saying the new house, that which is born of the Spirit of God, is going to be more glorious than what Moses had. And that was exactly what Prophet Quibus said. Remember that? Okay. So we have, we have the Word of God and we have confirmation by a prophet of God. And you've already said to me that you believe that there are prophets and that they can speak the Word of God and it will be a confirmation. Right? So we have a confirmation of it. Now, the Spirit of the Father is the Holy Spirit. And He is the glory of God. He is. What they saw in the Old Testament as a cloud was a manifestation in the natural realm of the Holy Spirit. That's what they saw. He wasn't in anybody, but He was on people. That's what happened right there. There was the cloud of the Old Testament. But now, guess what? There's a cloud in the New Testament as well. There's a manifestation of the Holy Spirit as a cloud in the New Testament. Remember when Jesus ascended in Acts 1 and 9? It says, and when he had said this, even as they were looking at him, he was caught up. Notice this. And a cloud received and carried him away out of their sight. It was not a cloudy day. It wasn't a cloudy day. It was the manifestation of the Holy Spirit manifesting as the glory of God that caught Jesus away. So we see it right there as Jesus finishes his earthly ministry. When Jesus returns, we see exactly the same thing. It's found in Luke 21 and 27. And Jesus said this, And they will see the Son of Man coming, watch this, in a cloud with power and great glory. Three things. A cloud, power, great glory. That's when he returns. And that follows exactly what we read in the book of Haggai. He's going to return uh, with this cloud and with power and with great glory. We're going to see it happening. Now, my last scripture. We'll wrap it up quickly. When Stephen was being stoned, he looked up, first, first martyr, he looked up, full of the Holy Spirit, heavens opened up, and guess what he saw? The glory of God. First thing he saw was the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand. Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Now I want to ask you something. Listen very carefully. Is Jesus seated at the right hand or standing? So why did he see him standing? I'll tell you why he was standing. To receive his martyr. He stood out of honor for the martyr who gave his life for him. It comes on. Jesus is standing for you. He's saying, Come. Come and receive the fullness. He loves you so much. Amen. Romans 6 and 4. Just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father. What raised Jesus from the dead? The glory of of the Father. Now watch this in Romans 8, 11. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, according to Romans 6, Jesus was raised by the glory of the Father. In Romans 8, it says the spirit raised him. 
So the Spirit is the glory. Do you see that? He was raised by the glory. And he says, if the Spirit that raised Jesus. So we know, by simple mathematics equation, the glory equals the Spirit. When the Holy Spirit was poured out in the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came into the earth and now covers the earth as it was prophesied. The glory will cover the earth. The Holy Spirit is present over the entire earth right now. And that is the glory of God right here, right now, poured out His power, his authority and his glory is poured out. Now, here's what concerns me. Those churches who are rejecting the Holy Spirit, presence, power, and manifestations are rejecting the glory according to what God wanted to happen. Because you see, what he says here, if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give Life to your mortal body through the Spirit who lives in you. This was God's plan from the beginning. If you read the book of Galatians, the promise made to Abraham was in fact receiving the Holy Spirit. That was the promise. When God said, I'm going to live in my people, I'm going to walk in my people. It is God's plan that His glory and His presence be in His people. That's us. We have to open our heart to understand this in our mind to understand that you already have the presence, the power, the authority, and the glory of God in you. And now we have to learn how to release that. Every eye closed.